consider a case where we are trying to find out solution to a problem of torsion of a non circular bar so figure here shows a bar which is subjected to torque t and is having a non circular cross section what we are trying to find out here is how much is the angle of twist and what is the nature of stresses under the action of this torque the approach what we are using is known as saint venant approach and it is also known as displacement based approach because in this approach we start with the displacement at any point on this bar and then proceed towards finding out stresses one parameter in this approach is theta which is angle of twist per unit length that is if you take point o as a reference point and consider a cross section at a distance z from this origin this particular cross section will have angle of twist which would be given as theta multiplied by z so that is what is meant by angle of twist per unit length as we have seen in the previous slide each of the cross section gets warped under the action of the torque and this warping is defined by warping function psi which is depending only on x and y coordinates and not on z that is at any value of z the warped surface is going to remain same and there will not be any change in this particular function now let's proceed to find out displacements at any point on this cross section in terms of the angle of twist which later on we are we need to find out so consider a point p which is at distance r from the origin and it is located at an angle beta with respect to the x axis the figure below shows the more details of this particular point so this particular point p under the action of torque moves to point p dash and the displacement of this point under the action of torque is given as r multiplied by angle through which it rotates so this angle is theta z so the total displacement from p to p dash is given by r theta the r theta multiplied by z now since this point is located at an angle beta with respect to x axis its x displacement ux can be written in terms of r theta z and angle beta so consider the right angle triangle here so we can write the ux would be given as r theta z multiplied by sin of beta and since the ux the point p dash is to the left of point p you will have a negative sign coming here so ux would be given as minus theta z into r sin beta and as you can see r sin beta is nothing but y so it will be given as minus theta y into z so that is what is given as value of ux in terms of theta and z similarly uy can be shown to be equal to theta into x into z and u z is defined as theta multiplied by warping function so that is the assumption that is made in this particular approach at this point i want you to pause the video and think how from the displacement functions that we have obtained we can reach to the stress function
Okay, let's see how the stress functions can be obtained from displacement functions. As we have seen in the last slide, we have already obtained the displacements in terms of the parameter theta and the warping function psi. The next step will be obtaining strains using the Cauchy's strain displacement equations. Once you obtain the strain, the next step is to obtain stresses using the generalized Hooke law. Through this approach, we will obtain the functions for stresses in terms of theta and psi. The details of the derivation are not part of this course and one who is interested can go through the textbooks to see the actual derivation steps. After the application of generalized Hooke law, one would obtain or one would find that the normal stresses sigma x, sigma y and sigma z as well as the shear stress tau x, y are equal to 0. The value of shear stress tau y, z and tau x, z are given in terms of theta and psi as given by this expression. Next we will apply the equations of equilibrium which we have studied previously in this course. If we substitute the expressions for the stresses into the equations of equilibrium, you will reach an important uh, insight into this problem that the psi which is the warping, warping function is harmonic that is it satisfies the Laplace equation. What this means is that for every cross section there will be a separate warping function and the nature of this function is such that it will be harmonic. So for circular cross section there will be, there will be one psi function, for elliptical there will be another and so on. But all this family of functions will be harmonic. The next step is relating the external torque to the internal resistances which are represented by these stresses. So if you sum up all the forces and moment with respect to the external forces and moments and equate them to the one generated by the internal resistances in terms of stresses, one would reach at expression for torque in terms of the warping function and the angle of twist as given in this particular case. As we, we have seen, the warping function can be found out based on the nature of or the geometry of the cross section. The external torque is given for a, for a problem and then theta can be found out that is angle of twist per unit length can be found out in terms of what is the external torque acting on the bar and the warping function psi which is dependent on the geometry of the cross section. The wow expression can be simply written in the form which is T equal to G multiplied by J theta. Here G is the shear modulus. The J is defined in terms of warping function as the area integral that is whatever your uh, area of cross section. So this is the region R over which this area integral is taken and uh, we can find out the value of J. After having obtained the value of theta and uh, psi, one can obtain the expressions or the, we can obtain the expressions for the stresses in terms of theta and psi by using the earlier developed equations for the stresses as in the previous slide. So, these equations can now be used to calculate the obtain the values of stresses in terms of theta and psi. 
Now let's look at the implementation of this process for some common cross sections. We'll see a circular cross section and an, and an elliptical cross section. How the procedure what we have uh, adopted can be applied there. 